Welcome back everybody to another exciting Lord Duckman production. Behind me here's my candy spider go-kart. And this sucker, man, people have been asking a lot of questions about this lately, which really surprises me. We get a lot of emails, a lot of just, what are you doing with it? What kind of engine are you going to put in it? Tell us more about that rear suspension. What you're doing here is really unique with all the Volkswagen parts. Well, you know I wanted to mount these trailing arms on here, and I used all Volkswagen axle parts, and I machined down that hub to make it fit onto that, so that way we have a rear suspension. Now, the previous rear suspension that was on this was a solid axle. Solid axle, well, it can do anything really good for handling. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, now it's going to have an independent rear. That's the goal here. I did a little cutting and cut one of these pieces of the frame out. That way I got it lined up. And the way this trailing arm lines up, it'll actually catch one of the stock mounts for the old single axle trailing arm. And it needs a new mounting bracket here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to take some measurements on that and see if I can fabricate some mounts. And once we got the mounts fabricated, of course, then we'll weld them on. But we'll see how much of that happens in this video. But do you know where I go for all my small engine parts needs? That would be none other than the HIPAA store. The HIPAA store is the place to find parts for all of your outdoor power equipment. Whether you have a lawnmower, chainsaw, generator, and heck, it's even the season for snowblowers right now. The HIPAA store is who you need to keep your machines running tip top. If you've never shopped with the HIPAA store before, well, you should. Not only do they have quality replacement parts for all of the leading brands, but the HIPAA store is currently running a promotion for new customers. To you, that means free stuff. So hit up the website and spin that wheel. You never know what you're gonna win for free. I got new goggles. So please, check out the HIPAA store for the links down below in the video description. Know that when you support the HIPAA store, you support the creation of my new YouTube videos. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store. All right, if you're watching a previous video, you'll remember I ran some all thread through these mounting points for that rear trailing arm. And that gives me something that's straight, so I know where my approximate mounting point location is going to be. Now, I want to make this hole slotted, so that way when I put the trailing arm on, if it needs any alignment adjustment, it would be as simple as loosening the bolt and pushing the arm forwards or back. And what I'll do is I'll put a chain tensioner on it also, which is just simply a washer and a bolt that goes this way, so I can lock it down into place. So I'll fabricate all that stuff up. It'll be all part of this little project right here. But meanwhile, looking at the end here, you can see I need a triangular bracket with a slotted hole. You can see I've put this yardstick on here to give me a pseudo straight edge. Gives me an idea as to how far down I want to be. And I'll check it just to make sure it's level with the frame. And then I will build off of this. And this is how I want to have my slot leveled to that. I discovered that the trailing arms on these suckers, they sit relatively level. They don't actually sit straight, you know, across or perpendicular, or I should say parallel to the ground. They actually have just a, a slight downturn. And the way I had this set up, where I had the arm hanging on, it was way too much. And I suppose it's okay if I want to lift it some, but lift really isn't not really part of what the plan is here originally. But in time, if I do want to do that, it's all about where I mount the shock location and, well, what kind of shock I put on here. Longer shock will, of course, raise it. And that spindle's been shortened, so ignore the ground clearance and stuff on that. That one really doesn't apply. It's actually, I think, two and a half inches shorter than what it should be, something. Anyway, I just put that there for show. Well, let's go ahead and get to measuring. What we're going to do is we're going to try to build a template, if you will, so that way I can take proper measurements off the template run it inside and then make a 2D model and then send them off to one of those cutting companies that uh, handles the uh, the project for me. Now I could fabricate and make it myself, but I want to try this. I've never taken the approach and made a model for it and sent it off. And it also means that things have to be very exact and I have to get it right the first time. Because once it, the piece comes out here, I got very little wiggle room. Unless of course I make it a little big. I suppose then I could just trim it down and make it work. But typically when I do things here, it's a uh, snip, fit, snip, fit, snip, fit, snip, fit, until finally it goes in. That's just the way it is. It's the nature of the beast. Now, a lot of the things that I do aren't always reproducible the same way. It takes a little more time that way, but I'm also not making things for the uh, mainstream release. You know, I'm not building a fleet of the same thing. Everything I build is a one-off, so that really didn't matter. But like I said, I want to try something new. And I'm noticing there's a rat hole or something over here. Look at that. We're going to have to set some traps over there. I see chicken feet. Um, Foot tracks in there, so somebody was digging. I hear you, duckies. What are you doing? What are you doing over there? <laughs> 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 
Anyway, let me have a seat over here. I'll we'll get the camera on it, and you guys can see, well, me building a model. Here we go. All right, in short, those are the measurements I took, and uh, I'm not too confident of my measuring of what happened here because everything was kind of freehanded and have a straight edge on it I was just holding things and yeah anyway <laughs> I'm just not happy with the way that turned out and that's when I decided I'm just gonna make a model I want to see it fit I want to see it work then we'll take the measures off the model and then we'll we'll make a, a 3d digital model out of it if you will well I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard and the back of this notepad is actually the perfect cardboard for that to make a template now I've got two straight edges this one is going to be the one that we slot the hole off of. This one is the longest edge of all. So I'd like to line it up with that and then draw a line along this. See what I can do with that. Okay. I guess I need to measure the distance from the edge to here. That way I can punch a hole in this. Start making some cuts. Alright, I think that's what we're going to do. All right, shorten that up a little bit. Boomer came over to uh, play with me. He's actually humping my shoe, but you know, that's what ducks do. I think that's about how we're gonna do this. Kinda like that. That tells me where my hole is gonna be. How about that? And what we'll do is we'll razor that out and then I'll slide it over this, I'll wind this back out, I'll slide it over it, and I'll start making my lines. And this here, because I don't have a proper table to cut it on out here, I have to be extra delicate so as to not stab the shit out of myself or stab something behind the blade and dull the blade out. There we go, that actually didn't work out too badly. I'm sure there's a million better ways to do it, and I'm sure everybody down in the comments has already told me so. Everybody knows more than I do, you know how that goes. <laughs> Alright, I think that's pretty good right there. Although, I wanted it this way, didn't I? Yes, just like that. Okay. And this is all thread, as I had mentioned before in the video. So what that means is that this... It's just a little snug in the mounting point, so... <laughs> That's what it takes to adjust it. That's pretty clever, Duck Man. All right. And there it is. I'm just gonna lop this corner over. It's hitting that fender. I don't mind if this is a little long. In fact, you know what? That actually might have been ideal had I made it longer to begin with brought it to about the middle of this because then there's always a little meat to cut off of it so you know what I'm gonna call this failed and we're gonna do that over again all right well one more time here <laughs> a little more we're dealing with the bipolar Florida weather right now this week it's been in the 40s all week long. It was just cold out with the wind blowing and here it decided to try to rain on me today and uh, it's about 75 out here and it's really balmy and just gross, really gross. Okay, well we're going to bring this, like I said, to the middle. Well, right about the middle, maybe just a little bit beyond it. That's fine because I might find myself trimming these. In fact, I probably will find myself trimming these. So we'll cut a new hole right here on this bolt. There it is. All right. And I know I can fold the cardboard over and I can cut it out with a scissor, but I don't want to have a fold in the template. That to me is just sloppy. It's gonna be a little awkward. And it could affect my measurements because folding will stretch the paper. That is right. I hear Cheeky digging next to me. In fact, all the chickens are around me right now. They're all minding their business except for Biddy, who keeps screaming his ass off. 
All right, that's much better. All right, we're gonna call that the hole. Wherever the hell my pencil is out here. That's our hole. Okay, now we'll lop this corner over as we did earlier. Set it up like that. Probably should have put this down a little further. Anyway, now we can get around the back here. And I should be able to... Make a marking where our straight edge is supposed to be. We'll cut that out. This is a dimension that's kind of floating in space. This one doesn't really need to be so exact. This one doesn't actually attach to anything, it's just floating in space, so that's okay right where it's at. Now this hole, I want to keep it about an inch plus or minus in either direction. That's going to give us our alignment. Although, coming off of this, it's probably not going to need very much. It'll probably need way less than that, but I figure I might as well maximize to whatever that rubber bushing that's in the other end allows me to give it, because each one of these, yes, does mount in a rubber bushing. Okay, so looking pretty good right about there. Now assuming about an inch, looking here, that's about an inch, that's the end of our hole. And I'll measure that out just to be sure, but that's gonna be our slot. So, freehanding all this stuff, yeah I know. We'll straight edge it out later. In fact, you can see it's not even straight right now. No, it needs to go over this way. Still not straight, but it's better. <laughs> Hi, cheeky. All right, All right. Uh, much better. Still, we're approximating. Okay, now the last line is going to be one that goes like this. Again, this one's just kind of floating in space, so that's all an approximate. What just happened? Now well, the chickens are just playing. Alright. Just kind of bringing it around like this. There's our template. So, should be able to cut this out. And the general shape of this is not final. This can be probably shrunk up a little bit more. It doesn't have to be this big, not by any means. And there it is. I feel much more confident now that I've actually made this versus, versus just cutting one out all freehand, versus just taking measurements and putting it on a notepad. Now I can actually check this <laughs> and see what kind of measurements we got. All right. Wow. It's, uh, it's almost 10 inches long exactly. How long did I have it here? I had 11. Yeah, 11's not necessary. You know, 10's probably not even necessary. I could probably bring this way into here and bring this up, you know, kind of on a, a compound curve bring some different shapes into it. It doesn't need to be this big. But the bigger I make it, the more weld area it will have, which means the stronger it's going to be. So you know what? I, I don't feel bad making one this big. This is not an issue to me. This is something we can go with. Right now, Cheeky's chasing Boomer. I love when that happens. He's such a wuss. <laughs> All right, so we're going to cut out the rest of this slot. Just make sure that it is level compared to the straight edge before we do. So I'll take a measurement here at this corner and a measurement here at this corner. This is my angle finder by the way which turns out we're gonna need that when we make our final model. But it also has a ruler on the end of it. Alright what's our last marking is seven so we are two and that's exactly two and a half. How about to that side? Two and a half. Actually, I squared that up pretty good. But again, you know what? I do have a little bit of fluidity because it doesn't have to be mounted exactly like this or exactly like this. It, it can be 
can be played with a little bit in there. So anyway, that's that's my model. Okay, good. Let's get the sucker cut it here. Cut it. -did 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 -did. Probably should be doing that with a razor versus the scissors here. Scissors kind of making a mess. to measure the diameter of the uh, the bolt the all thread is actually a little bit larger than the bolt is which is why it's threading in like that it's a loose threading fit I mean if I put any real force on it and tried to tighten the nut on it it would just strip it out but the fact is it's still threaded into the holes where it's at all right I'm gonna cut the rest of this out and we'll be back in just a minute we are with our slotted hole yeah I know it's squared off but when I make the actual 2d model the cut pattern be a little different than that it's okay if this hole is a little bit up or down because again I have the ability to move this when it comes time to weld it in everything can be a little fluid or a little dynamic that's okay because I'm expecting that everything isn't gonna fit exactly the way I wanted it to anyway all right well there's our model we're gonna copy that to a digital form and we're gonna get that sent off we're going to have that cutted, and hopefully to be back next week, although it is holiday season, and when holiday season comes around, things either move faster or they move slower, so it's anybody's guess as to how long it's going to take for this thing to actually get here. All right, well, here it is. Let me draw that up on the computer, and I'll show it to you. And I probably will kick a rooster's ass for not shutting up. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, what was my angle on this here? I want to check that. I had uh, about 70 degrees when I freehanded it happened. Oh, it doesn't go that far. Because it goes the other way. I was folding it the wrong way. This is not a tool I use this often. I actually got it when I was doing Eleanor's doors because I wanted those slanted pillars to be even on both sides. And what's funny is the pillars actually fell even just because of the lengths in which I cut the roof. Okay, where are we at? We are at... Looks like it's about 73 and a half. So 70 was pretty close. Not bad for a freehand. I probably could have pulled it off with 70, I think. And yeah, there it is. Okay, this is going to be something. This is going to be something. Daddy, I'm going to grow up to be a real go-kart. <laughs> All right. Now, I saw Cheeky over here a minute ago. I got a feeling she escaped. Yeah, I just saw her. She was chasing Boomer, and I think she chased her. Chased him through the fence. You better not leave me. You leave me, I would be heartbroken. Cause you're my little girl. Yes, you are. Burk, burk, you too. Where's Boomer? There he is. You did chase him. That's the reason why you're out here. I've never seen you escape before, ever. No. It's not your personality. Go ahead, go back in there. I'm gonna close the fence. Don't need any more... Ah, she's chasing him again. <laughs> Don't need any more animals running off. I already had my heart broken two years ago when Crash disappeared. And yeah, that was a bad day. But, had it not been for Crash disappearing, I never would have adopted her mother. But that's when her mother decided to move in. Where is Mama right now? Where is that Mama bird? That's her granddaughter. That's her daughter-daughter with Biddy. There's Mama. There you are. How you doing, girl? She's growing all new feathers. She's getting over being sick. Yeah, she had a little problem. Laid an egg inside of herself, and for those of you that know chickens, when that happens, they can end up with an infection. And she didn't end up with the infection, but she had all the other symptoms that with it. But she seemed to survive it. She's doing better. She's eating again, and now she's molting and getting a brand new set of beautiful feathers. And you can see all of her colors starting to come out on her. Now she's a real pretty girl. She was looking really ratty there for a while. In fact, she still looks pretty bad, but <laughs> she has like no tail left. <laughs> All right, good girl. You too. Yeah, I know. And they picked my plants clean. Look at this. They've been eating all the leaves off of it. Well, this is the season where they lose their leaves anyway, but... Yeah, these chickens just love their leaves. Who wants a leaf? You want one? There you go. I'm sorry. Your sister ate it. She did. She ate it. <laughs> you got a little red on your head. That's new. Never had that before. 
You got little red feathers on your head. You should just be gray. Let me see you. Come here. Let me see this pretty girl. Yeah, you see little red feathers on top of her head? That's new. She didn't have that. I mean, not even a couple weeks ago. Well, she changed the color. I wonder if that's a seasonal thing, or maybe she's just... No, she's almost a year old. She'll be old, year old on, uh, on New Year's Day. Oh, don't knock that down. You almost killed your sister. Look, look at all the leaves in here. Come here, look. Eat the leaves, look. Okay, you're going the wrong way. I really don't want you over there. I don't want you jump on the fence next. Although that nasty dog isn't over there anymore. No, I don't know what happened. It was there, and then it wasn't, and then it was there, and then it wasn't. And now it's completely gone, so... Jump! There's my body dolly, which I stood it up to try to get it out of the way to save some space, and it's kind of collapsing. <laughs> and all these pine needles, man, all these pine needles, a lot of this stuff's going away. You know why? Because the trees are going away. Duckman's getting a solar kit. Yeah, we're solaring this house. I'm going to try to save on my power bill, and I like the technology. I needed a new roof and stuff anyway, so that's what we're going to do. I'm sure now a million people are telling me why I probably shouldn't. Or maybe they're telling me why I should, or maybe they're asking me how much I paid, but we're not going to get into any of that until it's done. I want to see what actually happens here. But two trees there got to go. These two trees got to go. This one can probably stay, because the panels are all going to be down on that end, because the sun it arcs through the sky over there. So there's no sense in taking out those trees. And these are my work shade trees. I would really like to keep them if we can. If they take off one branch or something, I'm really not going to cry about that. But when the sun gets beyond that point anyway, I mean, these are my neighbor's trees. You can't, you can't cut those. They got to stay. They might trim that one, but I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. All right, well. All right, let's get to making that model. Hey, Mama Bird. You know, I had a little dream about this last night. That one of my friends who had a, a daughter, you know, about three, four years old. It might have been Ranchero, I don't remember. But it was in the dream. She came over to this and she started jumping up and down on it. <laughs> Which was more resilient than I would have expected because, well, it'll flex if a kid gets up on there for sure. But it screwed up my straight edge anyway and ruined the video that I was trying to record at the time in my dream. So anyway. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's get started. Well, I got in just in time. It got pitch black out here and started raining. I even heard a little bit of thunder. That's why I was coming outside here. I was hoping to catch a little bit of it on video. But anyway, good thing is, the rest of the video is uh, all inside work where I get to sit at the computer. <laughs> the wind must have been blowing real bad. I'm seeing all kinds of debris on the neighbor's roof. I just saw lightning. There's all kinds of like white things up there, which I don't even know what that is. And my plants are all flipped over out back. Yeah, there's the thunder, but it's kind of distant. There it is. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's get back inside and try to get something done today. All right, we're back, and you're probably not all too surprised that it's raining outside. Well, I went and I rendered this one that you see right here doing a little drawing using a program called LibreCAD. And I felt like a complete idiot using this software. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that hasn't used CAD before. I've used CAD, it was 20 years ago. I was doing CAD art. I wasn't doing technical drawing, so it really didn't matter the measurements and dimensions of things. It just depended on, you know, what looked good. And this just, man, I don't know. Libre CAD sucks, but I was able to make a drawing and I was able to get it to scale. It's to scale on my screen right now, so you notice it fits right in there like it should. Now you might notice that my slot is crooked, whereas the slot in here is straight. That's because I cut my slot crooked. <laughs> That's my fault. The center point was correct though. So this is correct, because this is technically 90 degrees off of everything. It's, it's, yeah, it's straight. So anyway, that works for that. I went and I priced that to find out what it would cost. and It was about 60 bucks to have four of those uh, cut for me and sent back. And I said, you know, why is that? It's because it's so big. So I did a version 2.0. There it is. You notice everything still lines up. We got our slot lined up. And what's most important is this corner right here lines up with that slot. And that's where we're at. So version 2.0, it's nicer looking. This is a big heaping mess of shit. This thing actually looks good and resembles the other pocket that's already on the, uh, the cart towards the center where the old trailing arm used to mount. So this works good. So what we did was we went and we uploaded it. Ba-boom, there it is. We picked our metal, 
We chose steel. We went with um, just mild steel. It's uh, three millimeters thick, AKA eighth of an inch. That's what you're looking at here. And for four of them, we're looking at dun -dun -dun, $30.92. And I believe that's including the shipping, getting them sent to me. So for 30 bucks, $7.50 each. Or $7.73 it says. I'll have those made. Yeah, they are. You wanna see it in 3D? Look at that. Oh, woo! So anyway, I'll have these uh, cut out and sent back to me, and uh, hopefully next week I should have them back because they're pretty quick about this from what I understand. So we'll see. Anyways, I guess that's going to end up the video. So like you, like you, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that tingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. And, uh, well, I guess that's it for today. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. But do you know where I go for all... Fuck you. Welcome back, everybody, to... Fucking bitty.